Today we're going to take apart the brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra, the one we did our durability test on. In the previous video, we took apart the S pin. This is what's left of it. And in today's video, we're going to see how the S22 works from the inside and how they managed to waterproof the S pin hole in the bottom. Cause it's one of the biggest holes in a smartphone that has ever needed to be watertight. Want to know what else is tight? Your first three months free with the Sirius XM app. Huge thanks to Sirius XM for sponsoring this video. The Sirius XM app has over 425 expertly curated channels for your listening enjoyment. Whether you're looking for ad-free music, play-by-plays for major sports teams, talk shows, news, comedy, and tons of Sirius XM app originals. Personally, I was just listening to the History of Marvel Comics podcast, where they were talking about the history of Black Panther, where he was originally called the Coal Tiger. A good name, but not near as epic as the Black Panther. They talk about a ton of cool stuff during that podcast that you can listen to during your free three months using my link down in the description, SiriusXM.com slash JerryRigOffer. The app works on phones, smart speakers, TVs, and even computers. I like that there's a large selection of news reporting as well, because with everything going on, it's always good to stay informed. Find your groove on the Sirius XM streaming platinum plan and get your first three months free with a subscription. Now it's time to dive inside of the Galaxy S22 Ultra to see inside the S Pen cavity. Let's get started. The S22 Ultra is probably the most powerful Android phone on the market at the moment. I say most powerful, but remember it's only a super small increase over last year and the year before. Personally, I think smartphones have kind of plateaued and any phone from the last three years is still pretty great and can kind of compete in the same realm. Even the design hasn't changed that much. On this S22 Ultra, we have the adhesive attached glass back that Samsung's been using for the past seven years with the same removal steps. With a whole lot of heat and quite a bit of slicing, that softened adhesive from around the edges. Once it's cut away, we can get our first look inside of the S22 Ultra. It's interesting to note that inside of the glass back, the five individual camera circles are all attached on the same metal lens body. Kinda cool. We do have a wireless charging coil back here. This guy can charge up the phone at 15 watts and reverse wireless charge other devices at about five watts. These copper coils are pretty cool and we'll come back to them in a minute. The top of the phone has nine normal Phillips head screws holding everything down. They are the same size, which is convenient. I can detach the metal plate, which has an NFC pad and a Lego style connector. And then the battery with its own Lego style connector can be unplugged. The top plastics also come loose at this point. Then we can head down south and remove the six silver Phillips head screws holding down the bottom. At first glance, I thought this time around the lower loudspeaker might not have any balls inside, but it turns out they're all dropped inside of the unit from over here on the edge of the speaker. It's still got them. With the plastics gone, I can remove the three super long extension ribbons that connect the top board with the bottom board and three more screws that hold the charging port board in place. After removing the SIM card tray, the bottom board can be taken out. The 45 watt USB-C port does have a red rubber ring around the tip to help out that ingress protection. Another point that water can get inside the phone is down here by the loudspeaker. Samsung is once again using rubber and a watertight mesh to keep water out, which is all very securely glued to the frame of the phone. Samsung is pretty much a master of glue, as you'll see in a minute, but when it comes to waterproofing screens, that's totally fine and a valid purpose for using strong adhesive. The same thing goes for the microphone hole mesh as well. Before we can check out the S Pen's waterproofing, let's remove the motherboard. I'll unplug the S Pen charger, the S Pen screen digitizer, along with the front facing camera. Then the motherboard is free. It's interesting that with the motherboard out, we can now unplug and detach the camera units, and it really goes to show just how much real estate is dedicated to these cameras inside of the phone they take up an impressive amount of space. The camera block has a 12 megapixel wide angle camera up top, which does not have OIS. Then the 108 megapixel main camera in the center, which does have OIS. 
The 10 megapixel 3x telephoto also has OIS. And finally, the big boy unit down at the bottom is a 10 megapixel 10x telephoto camera, which also has the optical image stabilization, but it's all internal, encapsulated inside of the periscope since the sensor is at a 90 degree angle from that rear lens. I take apart one of these in my Galaxy S20 video if you want to see how it works, but it is indeed anti-jiggle. The motherboard is also dual stacked, a whole lot of technology in a super small form factor. The top loudspeaker also has balls of its own. The speaker has balls in two locations. And I'm no expert on ball to speaker ratios, but Samsung obviously thinks that a lot of balls are a good thing. They do help the speaker sound bigger than it actually is, since there's more surface area inside for the sound to reverberate off of. The frame is milled out of aluminum, probably one of the reasons why it has so much strength during the bin test. Finally, let's work on this battery so we can check out the S Pen enclosure. For the past ever, Samsung has been extremely excessive with how they attach batteries to their phones. I'll drip some isopropyl alcohol in here to start softening the adhesive while we see how the S Pen enclosure is made watertight. The S Pen is charged by this little tiny coil of copper here at the top. The energy goes from the motherboard into the coil and wirelessly transfers into the copper coils of the S Pen's tip and down to the tiny capacitor at the other end of the pen, the side closest to the bottom of the phone. It's interesting to see how it works. Now, when milling out the body of the S22 Ultra, it would have been extremely difficult and expensive to just drill an S Pen sized hole through the middle of the block. Difficult to line everything up just right. Plus, if it were just a hole drilled into the metal, it would no longer be able to charge wirelessly. So to solve those two issues, charging and expensiveness, Samsung has actually made their S Pen compartment watertight with a thick piece of plastic glued down over the top of the hole. Which is smart, it saves time and money, and still allows them to charge the S Pen while it's inside of the phone. There is a little piece of rubber at the end of the channel to protect the tip of the S Pen from ever hitting metal. Keeps it from flattening out. But yeah, it looks solid to me. And the adhesive making the plastic watertight seems just as strong on the S Pen hole as it does on all the other IP68 ingress points. So thumbs up for that. Adhesive is normally a good thing. Now, every smartphone manufacturer uses some kind of adhesive on the battery as well. Don't get me wrong, adhesive is the norm. Apple uses magic pull tabs, and everyone else, like OnePlus, usually uses adhesive gentle enough that batteries can be removed by hand. Usually. Samsung, however, locks down their battery like it's going into space. There's more white web in here than an entire Spider-Man movie, like a straight jacket of glue. And yeah, I get that Samsung has had bad experiences with batteries, but when they use an apocalyptic amount of adhesive, it makes the battery a lot harder to be recycled at the end of its lifespan. Lithium batteries are 95% recyclable at this point, in phones and electric vehicles but they are only able to be recycled if it's easy to separate them from the rest of the materials inside of the phone. It would be very worthwhile for the planet for Samsung to implement a better form of adhesion. It would benefit repairability as well, of course, but with Samsung selling 250 million phones every year, recycling is pretty important as the devices phase out. We gotta think long term. There is a copper heat pipe under the battery ready to dissipate heat from the motherboard out through the screen, but yeah, for me personally, the recycling aspect is pretty darn important. I do wish Samsung were designing their phones in a way that facilitates the end of life experience. So even though I don't need to upgrade my two and a half year old phone at the moment, when the time does come, I probably won't be picking a Samsung phone until they attach their batteries better. There are plenty of good phones out there to choose from, so there's no need to pick one that makes recycling difficult. And, you know, I really hate to say it, but Apple is looking pretty good environmentally wise with their new repair program, longevity and end of life experience. So an iPhone is not off the table. It feels a little dirty to say, but I said it. Luckily, I don't have to decide anytime soon since my current phone is still working great. But one phone that's not working great, however, is this one. Normally when I reassemble my teardowns, they work. But this time around, after some close inspection, it looks like I sliced through the display ribbon extension ever so slightly with my pry tools as I was removing the back cover. Everything else is still working, of course. The phone is on and functional under the dark screen. It's just unfortunate that this 25 cent extension ribbon 
is what's keeping my screen from turning back on. Either way, it's a minor issue, still very fixable. I'll either repair this phone or use it for parts to repair other phones. Nothing goes to waste on my end. And there you have it, the S22 Ultra. Watertight with no foresight on end of life. Is repair and recycling important to you? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And remember, your phone is infinitely less likely to die while installing a teardown skin than it would be if you took it apart. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.